on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lighter, is it? The lighter you put it, the better it will sound. Hello. Hi. Look who I found! <laughs> We're having a lovely day of shopping and coffee and lunching yeah. and knitting. Yeah. I can't see you properly. No, it's it's <laughs> it is. Bright. Right, shall we go and look at some chazzy shops? Yes, I think so. I thought I'd just show you what I picked up on the day that we went to um, Tavistock to meet Cherie. I say we. Uh, Johnny and the kids and mum dropped me off and then they went to a place, a National Trust house called, I think you say it, Cotille. Uh, and then they came back to meet me later on in the day. But you saw me and Cherie doing some shopping, so I thought I'd give you a little glimpse of bits and bobs that I picked up. So we went to that fantastic fabric shop and I'm just trying to remember the name of it. I will... I will check it. I should have checked it before I put my camera in the uh, tripod and set it going and everything. But um, I'll check it and I'll tell you in a bit. Uh, but in that fabric shop, I bought some cute little fabrics which appealed to me for this fat quarter. These are all fat quarters. This one was only a pound. It was in the sale basket. So I, uh, I treated myself to those bits just for a general bits and bobs because I liked them. You know, I'll find a use for them later kind of a thing. And then I bought these four which coordinate beautifully. And these are going to be for my spring quilt, which I've started collecting. Now it's not all going to be coordinated like this, but I just so happy to pick up this, I'm sorry, this little range and then realized afterwards how well they all coordinated. I was obviously in a very sort of a pastel tealy turquoisey peachy kind of a frame of mind today <laughs> that day so i've got this one that's got little birds and nests on it and then a sort of a pale minty fabric with a polka dot and then this lovely sort of gray with these beautiful little flowers on it which is gorgeous and then this slightly larger polka dot which is on the coral Oh, I can't stop yawning now, I've started. Oh, every time I start to talk. I honestly don't do it on purpose. And then in the pannier market, I bought a couple of things which are presents, so I'm not going to show those, just in case the people that they are for happen to see. But um, in, there was a little shop that had lots of toadstooly things hanging on a tree, and I saw this absolutely gorgeous orangey toadstool. And as you know, I have a lot of Christmas toad, Christmas toadstool decorations and things. I haven't got an orangey one, so I bought that one for my collection. And the last thing, last thing that I bought was this incredible bead from the bead store. I'm not sure if you're going to see it. I made it already into a necklace. I ordered this chain whilst I was away so that when I got home, it was waiting for me. Um, I'll try and show this in a different light if I can as well. But this is a tumbled fire opal bead. And I have never in my life seen anything like it before. I've had fire opals. I used to do silversmithing um, a long while ago. And I have actually set a couple of fire opals. So I know that they generally look very much like this orange part. But um, I mean, just look at that. It's gorgeous. So I bought a couple of silver beads to go with it and then I've got all the other components at home and I've just put it on quite a long chain and I've been wearing that a lot. I really like it. 
Now I'm going to show you um, the gifts that Cherie very, very kindly gave to me. Cherie and I swapped gifts when we had our little meet-up, which is, I think, generally the done thing and a very pleasant thing to look forward to. Uh, so this is what she gave to me. A little card with a beautiful owl and a butterfly on it. I absolutely love that. That's one of those cards that I'm going to have to keep out. And you know, every time she sends me a card, I think, mm, I, don't, I don't want to put that, I don't want to get rid of that one. <laughs> because the artwork's always so lovely. So that was the beautiful card. And then she gave me this fantastic little set of snips, which she said she'd seen um, on uh, Kay, the Crazy Sock Ladies podcast. Apparently she likes to use these. And they're clever because they've got this little rubber tip protection thing. And when you pull that off, it just stays there. And they just open a little bit so you can just snip your yarn. And if you've known me for any time, you'll know that I absolutely love to have little tiny pairs of folding up scissors or dinky scissors in my mini knit kits so that I can have a pair with every project. So that is very much appreciated. And she gave me some of these tea bags, which... I haven't actually tried yet and I said I was going to try one whilst we were away and I never got round to. They were in the bag and I kept forgetting they were there. But this is a Marks and Spencer's relaxed tea. And it doesn't say what's in it. So I'll try one later today and then I'll uh, I'll see if I can work out what, what different flavours. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there'll be some chamomile and maybe some lavender, but I'll see if I can taste any of the other flavours. Then she gave me this absolutely beautiful handmade project bag, which has got this beautiful green and gold butterfly design on it, which is funny because I was only saying to my mum the day before, I realised when I was looking through my project bags to get ones together for my holiday projects, that I've got a very disproportionate balance of, um, well, it's not a balance because it's disproportionate, there isn't a balance between the number of themed Christmas, Halloween, Easter bags I've got and the number of just every day don't particularly apply to any one season or a theme sort of bags. So I was, I was thinking I'm going to have to look for some more fabrics to make some more sort of every day, no rhyme or reason, just beautiful fabrics. And then lo and behold, um, Cherie had made me this absolutely gorgeous bag. And it's got this really lovely little sort of leather. I don't know if it is leather, but it feels like leather, actually. I think it might be a little green leather tie on the zip. And it's lined with some nice natural um, calico type fabric. So it's easy to see inside. So I shall be popping a very special project into that one. I Actually, it's got a bit crumpled because it's been in that bag. So I'm going to get the iron out in a bit. And the last thing she gave me was this absolutely beautiful pumpkin candle. And it's like, um, I think they call this like a mercury glass type. Um, glass. <laughs> Words. Yeah, it's got, I've, I've kept it taped up because I didn't want it to um, get bashed about and rattled about in the car. But I suppose I can take all of this off now. So it's got a candle inside it. As I probably already said, this beautiful lid. Oh, and the smell already, it's wafting up to me and it just smells gorgeous. It's uh, cedar wood and vanilla and it just smells so autumnal and I absolutely love it. And it says it burns up to 20 hours. I don't know where this came from, unfortunately, so I can't recommend a place to go and get one like it. But maybe Cherie will tell me. Um, I don't know whether it was like an independent place or whether it was a a bigger sort of chain shop or whatever, but um, it's absolutely, it doesn't have a logo or um, anything on the tag, but wherever it's from, it's absolutely beautiful and I can't wait. I mean, even when all that candle's burnt away, I can use this just as a decoration or a trinket pot, can't I? So that's going to be um, taking pride of place this Halloween. It's autumn and Halloween. And I've made myself a coffee so I can sit and chat to you. And it's got pumpkin spice syrup in it. And it's the first time... Oh, my friend Paula bought it for me for Christmas last year. And it's the first time 
I have opened it, I've saved it all that time until now. So I've just had my first little slurp of that and that's delicious. Myself comfy. I'm trying a new setup. Uh, this is my little knitting corner, which I never usually re used to record in because um, there's a window behind me and I've never had any kind of. Well, I used to have those horrible dentist surgery um, vertical blinds, which really aren't. I say they're horrible, they might be to your taste. <laughs> I don't like them. Uh, that was what was here when we bought the house, and after so many years of the cats weaving in and out of them and pulling them, breaking them and getting the fur all caught up in there and everything. I just had a moment one day and pulled the, the lot of them down. So for a few years, I didn't have anything. 
But since I last recorded a vlog or a podcast or anything, we've had these um, shutters fitted. Don't know, people call them different things. I, I've heard them called just shutters. I've also heard them called plantation shutters. So I don't know what's the right. That so sounds a bit sort of colonial and wrong to me somehow. But anyway, um, yes, I'm trying with those two. I've got, there's four of them. And I've got the two directly behind me closed. I know you can still see a bit of light behind them, but you'll have to let me know if that's a, a good, a, a okay, or if it's distracting or annoying. Then I've got a light up here, which is just out of view because that's very bright, but I needed some illumination. And then I've got another lamp over here on. So let me know what you think to the setup. I just felt it was nice to have something a bit, you know, a bit more of a crafty environment rather than just sat at the dining room table in front of my um, glass cabinet. So this is where I keep a lot of my stuff. It's very messy, desperately overdue for um, a clean up, a tidy and a massive great big pot of um, Epimax cream for my hands, which isn't very attractive sat there, but it's where it, it's handy for me. So I'm going to tell you what I was working on on holiday. So this this vlog, um, just getting back into it, somehow whilst I was on holiday, because I've had a very long period of a bad fibro flare, which I'm just sort of trying to work my way out of at the moment, uh, I managed to film while we were out and about, but I just somehow struggled to sit down and do any chatting to the camera whilst we were on holiday. So you'll have to put up with me sort of doing that at home now that we're back rather than you know it happening at the time but i'm sure you'll appreciate that it's i'm just getting back into the swing of things so i made i worked on four projects while we were away um the first one is my um autumn halloween hexi quilt it's an english paper pieced quilt um it's right over the back of the settee i will get it out and take some separate footage of it but i thought i'll just put it behind me for now so that you can see what it looks like um it's getting quite big but i want it to be a bit bigger yet so um i'm gonna hopefully carry on putting hexes into that over the next few weeks i don't know whether i get to quilt it and sandwich it and everything this year or not but we'll see maybe we will um so that was something that i worked on quite a lot at the cottage that we stayed in in the evenings because it's not a very portable or practical project to take out and about but it's uh, it's something i find very relaxing therapeutic and creative because i love the process of looking at the space where i want a hexi to go looking at the colors and the patterns and things that are in around surrounding it and then finding one that slots in nicely there so um so yeah i really enjoy that process and i've got uh, i've got a spring quilt in the planning stages but well i say planning there isn't much planning with my quilts really it's much more of a a gathering and then a gathering of materials then a fly by the seat of your pants kind of a thing but i've got a couple of ideas for designs that i might like to use for that anyway i digress i'll talk about that when i'm starting it <laughs> then I, I took a knitting project a crochet project and a small cross stitch project so the knitting project i took you would have seen in the vlog that i cast it on whilst we were traveling down um to devon I stayed in dartmoor i'm sure i said that during the vlog at some point um so i've made a lot of progress with these I've forgotten what order I need to do things in. <laughs> right, the yarn I'm using is Felt Fusion and it's called Not Very Halloween-y. So there's Felt Fusion and there's the name. Uh, and I bought this when we went to Spring Into Wool Yarn Festival in April. I think it was early April, was it? About then. And then this is the... I've forgetting that this is attached to my knitting this is the yarn which you can imagine when i saw it i squealed and grabbed it and said take my money immediately because i absolutely adore it uh and i think it is very halloweeny so i'm actually on the second sock now i'm just working my way down the leg there's a little witch hat progress keeper which 
um, which is one that I made. It was in my shop last year and there'll be some in the shop again this year. Uh, and then here, let me find the sock blocker. Here is the first finished sock. So you can probably see from that that the uh, the main colour is a zebra sock. So it's got these lovely flecks of black going through it every so often, which is how the base yarn comes. And then you dye over that. And the heel and the toe probably not showing up very well because of me being in black as well. They are um, made with a little bit of the Falkland sock yarn that I have in the shop, and I just over dyed. Um, over some that had gone wrong uh, and I over dyed it three times to get a really nice saturation of black. So it's all my usual uh, statistics for a sock. It's a 2.25 millimeter uh, chow goo red lace knitting needle uh, and it's I think a hundred centimeter cable. I quite I do quite like a long cable. I don't like to feel like I'm be hemmed in by it uh, and it's 64 stitches i did a one by one twisted rib i don't know if you can see that very well there but that is a twisted one by one rib on on the cuff i did a true forethought heel um and then i did just a normal double decrease toe finished with kitchener stitch at the end and i'm so thoroughly enjoying this project so I shall work my way down the uh, second sock over the next few weeks and hopefully have these done in plenty of time for Halloween because I do have more Halloween yarn that I want to knit this year if I can. Although I'm trying really hard not to put too much pressure on myself with things like that. Right, let me just tuck all this away. Oh, and I'm keeping it in. The project bag is an Ollie and Brother one, which Cherie sent to me. I think it was last year and it's a lovely Halloweeny. It's got skelling bones, skeletons and moths and things on it. It's adorable. Uh, the cross stitch is in a really pretty takeaway box because <laughs> it's just a tiny little beaded cross stitch kit and I put it in here so that if I needed to use the beads while we were on holiday I'd got somewhere that I could put them to. I didn't have to go searching around for a little bowl or anything. Um, and the it's a it's a Mill Hill cross stitch kit, and it's from the Autumn Harvest collection, and it's called Boo Ghost. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And I actually finished stitching it yesterday. So here's my little bit. Can you see it? Okay. So it's actually teeny weeny, and this little pumpkin fella here. I've got to cut him and the ghost out, and then stitch the pumpkin on top of the ghost and then put a backing on. And that's going to be an, a decoration for my Halloween tree. Uh, and I really enjoyed this little project. I must admit that although I like doing really big projects, um, I, do, I do like to have small dinky quick finishes in between because it's just a bit of a palette cleanser and you don't feel like you're plodding on forever through something that you feel like you're never gonna get to the end of. It doesn't close if you trap your dress in it, does it? silly woman there we go that's better and the, the crochet project that i took is in a bag made by me it's just a drawstring bag and it's got a lovely halloweeny design with black cats skulls candles potions moths and then the little um what do you call that? The channel at the top that has got some little ghosties on. And I've got a lovely cat in a pumpkin pin there, which was made by, um, I think I got that from Punky Pins. So that's really cute. And then it's got a project bag charm on it, which was from my Halloween countdown box last year. So you can tell I'm very full into my Halloween things now which you know you have to sort of be always one step ahead 
when you're an indie dyer, I think you have to keep your head sort of one step ahead of the game. So it feels, even though it's still August, it feels very much like Halloween is only around the corner to me. Let me get my yarns out. So the, the project that I am making, well, that's very messy. The project that I am making is the uh, virus shawl. I don't even know who that's by. Does it say on the chart? Crochet pattern, Woolpedia, it says. Yes, the virus shawl. And I'm using a, a 3.5 millimetre crochet hook with a soft grippy handle. And then I'm doing this in three different colours. I'm sort of doing, if you know the um, virus shawl, you know it has this repeat of so many rows. And I'm using three different colours, as I've just said. The first one is, got it folded right over the logo. That's My Mama Knits. Now, I bought this when we were on holiday in October half term in Pittenweem in Scotland. And I bought this from the, the Woolly Brew Shop in Pittenweem, which was absolutely lovely. And this is Superwash merino sock yarn and it's 75 merino 25 nylon and the colorway is ornamental bat and that's this one it's a gorgeous variegated saturated purple blowing out a bit in this light that's better that's much better oh yeah what a difference okay so now i know where to hold the yarn <laughs> and then the second colorway is one that i bought i actually ordered this from um temporal spin after i saw this on her instagram and it's called eek by hewlin which i believe is the lady who is the indie dyer's son uh so that's this one hold it there and that's a mixture of blacks purples and really nice hot neon orange which has got lots of speckles on it as well it doesn't really show up that well in the cake it looked more obvious in the skein and the third one that i'm using is an is one that i dyed myself um and it's just a pale green pale neon green and then it's got i don't know if you can see them very well it's on the sparkle sock base and it's got speckles of um it's got neon yellow and then like a dark purple and bits of pink and things in it i'm thinking about making this a halloween colorway for this year and if i do it's going to be called frankie so that was the third one and I did quite a lot of progress on this even though I couldn't do it in the car because the roads for miles around where we were staying with those narrow single track lanes very bumpy and every time I tried to work on this I got car sick really quickly so uh, I couldn't but there we go it's um it's already ready at the small small shawl stage but I want it to be a big shawl, a really big Halloween shawl. So I, I realise that this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea. I realise that these are really quite clashy colours. Um, and for anything that wasn't sort of meant to be very, very in a theme, I probably wouldn't have put them together. But I just really wanted something that was really in your face, Halloween-y um, and quite costumey. So... I think that for that purpose, look how tiny it looks. <laughs> um, for that purpose, I think it works really well and I'm really happy with it and it feels absolutely lovely. And if you've ever made the virus shawl, you'll know exactly how addictive this pattern is. So uh, yes, they were the projects that I worked on whilst we were away. Um, I've got a few other projects on the go at the moment and loads of finished objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, record a proper podcast. Um, I'm not going to say too much at the moment, but I have got a big, uh, a big life update for you and exciting news. So um, I'm going to do, sit down in the next. It's probably going to be, I don't know actually when I'll be able to do it because here in England, the children don't go back. Well, in Derbyshire, the children, they've got the rest of this week and all of next week off. So at the moment, it's difficult to sit and record because they're all 
you know, I don't mind when it, I'm just doing a bit of vlogging so much because, you know, if they interrupt that, it's more relaxed. But if I want to sit down and do a proper knitting podcast style thing, it gets on my nerves when they keep people keep banging about and shouting in the background and asking me banal questions. So I'm going to, that will be with, with you soon, but I'm not going to pin myself down to a particular time or date as yet, just because I don't like letting people down saying I'll do something at a certain time and then not actually managing it. Uh, so, yeah, I will be coming to talk to you about life updates and exciting projects that are finished, ones that I'm still working on and the future very soon. But I will say thank you very much for joining me for this long overdue vlog and I will be seeing you again very soon and I'm really looking forward to getting back into more of a routine with uh, vlogging and podcasting and things. So take care and I'll see you very soon.